I've looked at all of the 2024 drivers except this one, and a lot of people have some amazing things to say about it, so I can't wait to check it out. This driver is packed with technology, and though it doesn't have 10K in the name, the manufacturer promises this is going to be an extremely, extremely forgiving driver, and the moment of inertia is way up there. Let's find out. And before I tell you which one it is, let me take a shot with it. Oh yeah, that's nice. Wow, Clubhead Speed 107. That might be an all-time Let's Play Through record. Got to be the adrenaline of this driver. Ball speed was 147, smash was 1.37, the estimated carry 236. Let me hit one more though. All right, that was a really good one. Shot two coming here. Hit that a little bit lower on the face, I'd say. Still a nice result. Clubhead speed was 103, ball speed was 149, the smash was 1.45, which is interesting to note off a hit that was not right in the center. That's a pretty good number. Estimated carry there, 240. Let's go find those balls. Now, those were literally my first two shots. I just unwrapped the plastic before I actually hit the tee box there. This is the ST Max from Mizuno. Now, if you've been watching Let's Play Through for a while, you know that I have a love affair with Mizuno clubs. And in particular, in 2021 and 2022, I rated Mizuno as the top ranked driver of those years. This year, so many people have been talking about the ST Max, talking about how forgiving it is. And if you saw my video, you know I really like the 10K Max from Ping. That's actually what's in my bag right now, but this is the last driver I've got to test for the year, so there's still a chance to replace it. All right, walking up to the balls here. Distance looks pretty darn good. Now we have a little wind in our face. And first ball here is at 252. That was the first one I hit. The second one, while the swing speed wasn't as high, it actually seemed to fly a lot further. Just got better contact with it. And here, we're gonna be in rarefied air at 273 for a mere mortal like me. That's a heck of a poke. So in terms of distance, really like what I saw right there. I will say in terms of like sound and feel, it's a much louder sounding driver than I've ever heard out of a Mizuno driver. And in terms of feel, it's a little stiffer. Certainly if you're used to Mizuno irons, that buttery soft feel, this is a stiffer feel. All right, but it's not a bad thing. You're gonna know exactly where on the club face you hit that ball, just like I did on that second shot. But I just wanna let you know what I'm hearing and seeing out here. So there are three main pieces of technology that separate this ST Max from last year's STX and STZ, two great drivers in their own rights. But this year's driver is absolutely a much bigger profile than those two. This just looks bigger at address. Mizuno says it looks bigger than the 460 cc's that it is. And I gotta admit, especially looking down at this club, it's a big looking driver. Now that's more aesthetics, but the two pieces of technology that are really important here are the Cortec chamber. Mizuno uses a lot of marketing speak that quite frankly, I can't even enunciate, but what this is supposed to do is create what we hear from all drivers, which is higher MOI, higher COR or coefficient of restitution, how springy that can be. They're really going at the USGA limits here with this driver. The last piece of technology that's important is this face. It's made out of a new composite material. They call it Beta Rich TILFS. Again, a lot of marketing speak here from Mizuno, but it's basically a new, lighter, faster face material. And this face, like we were seeing from some of the big manufacturers, is variable thickness. So again, it's going to really help you out on those off-center hits. So far, so good from what I saw in the first hole, but let's try hole number two here. All right, next hole here is gonna be the workability test. So if you watch this show, you know I hit more of a draw. I'm gonna set up for a fade here and we're gonna see if I can move this ball left to right. Now, when you've got a super forgiving driver like this ST Max promises to be, generally gonna be a little bit of a setback in terms of being able to shape your shot, but we'll see what we do. Shot one here. Playing this more off the front of my foot, gonna take more of a outside to in swing. Let's see if we can move it. Oh, it's moving, but it's pretty darn straight. Very, very slightly fading there. Clubhead speed was 98, ball speed was 137, smash 1.39, estimated carry 210. Yeah, see, it's, it's almost like it wants to move, but it stayed pretty darn straight. Maybe just a tiny bit of a cut there. Again, clubhead speed was 100, ball speed was 134, smash factor 1.34, estimated carry 227. Next shot here. Yeah, again... I'm getting very, very little movement out of that shot. 
Clubhead speed 99, ball speed 134, smash 1.36, estimate carry 205. Now those numbers are gonna be less than my normal shots with the draw because it fades a little bit of a weaker shot, but yeah, we're not quite getting that left to right movement. And that's a hallmark of a very forgiving club because no matter where you hit it on the face, it seems to fly fairly straight. Now, one thing I do wanna note here about those shots, even though they didn't get the movement that I was hoping for, if we talk about consistency, how about that? When you can throw a blanket over a couple of balls, that's pretty darn good. And this was shot two and three here next to each other. Shot one was just over here to the left. So once I made a little bit of an adjustment, that was pretty darn consistent. We're at 223. So in terms of distance, a fade shot, not gonna be as powerful as a draw for me in my swing. Uh, and we are into the window a little bit, but we weren't testing distance here. Decent distance for a fade shot for me when I'm really trying to control the ball and talk about control. Now the wind's not blowing too heavy here today, but we should get a few extra yards with it just a little bit behind us. Let's find out. All right. I'll tell you what, a pretty darn forgiving result. It's gonna find the left rough, but not bad for where I hit that on the club face, which is gonna be much more towards the heel. And that's not a normal miss for me. My normal miss is toe side. If we look at the club head speed though, man, we are getting great club head speed out of this, 105 miles per hour. And I don't think I'm swinging any faster than my normal swing speed. Ball speed 144, smash 1.38. Our estimated carry there 230, and the estimated carry and roll 255, shot two. I don't know if it's a more aerodynamic thing. I don't know what it is, but we're getting some high swing speeds. Whoa. That one I skied. I hit it up high on the face. It did cover the water, thankfully, but again, club head speed was up there high again, 103. Ball speed 136, smash 1.32, estimated carry 208, estimated carry and roll 232. All right, see if we catch one in the middle now. Better result there, although I'd say that was slightly toe side, but I've got to say this driver, extremely forgiving. Club head speed was 104, ball speed was 144, the smash was 1.38, the estimated carry 229, estimated carry and roll 255. I think it's gonna be better. Let's go find out where it finished. Well, I wanted this to be a distant test. It ended up being a forgiveness test because those strikes were all over the club face. And again, still pretty darn consistent results. As you can see, there's a ball right here. The other ball is only six yards away to the left. And the best one was our third one, which is way up there. But even that one was hit off the toe. And not bad distance, honestly, for the one this is went sky high, 219. It could have been a lot worse. Second one here, 222. Again, not too far off. And then we've got this one over here, which was much further off the toe, but we got really good distance out of it. And I did miss the fairway, but I didn't miss it by much. And look at that, we're gonna squeak over 250, 255 for a pretty bad miss hit. So all in all, very forgiving driver. It's gotta be up there with both the QI10 and the Ping 10K Max for me in terms of forgiveness. Let's see if we can really test distance though. I'm gonna to try to hit a couple in the middle here before we end this video and I give you my final thoughts and my final rankings. So this hopefully is the distance test. We're gonna hit a few shots here with Mizuno. We're gonna measure them with our G80 and see what kind of distance we can squeak out of this thing. Shot one. That one again, very, very forgiving result for where I hit that on the club head. Club head speed 101, ball speed 139, smash 138, estimated carry 217, estimated carry and roll 241. But I hit that, I hit that right there. Very, very forgiving driver. It would be nice to hit one in the middle though, I gotta say. Let's see if we can do that here. There we go. Nice ball flight out of this thing. Club head speed 101, ball speed 143, smash 142, estimated carry 227, carry and roll 252. All right, so the first one that I hit off the toe actually did find the bunker here, just kind of rolled in. Distance was pretty darn good though, for a toe shot, 248. And I keep seeing that with this club. Even strikes that don't hit the middle of the fairway go very long now. This was our second one. Now this is the one that I said we kind of ran out of space on the fairway because on this dog leg left, I actually blew it right past. So in terms of distance, again, very good number, very strong at 268. And we've got one more here in the middle. That was our best of the bunch. And again, a very good number. 
at 270 on the button. So all in all, very good numbers for distance. Now it's time to rank this club. And as you know, I like to rank clubs with five criteria. First one is gonna be distance. And for me, this is gonna be a very strong four and a half out of five for distance. In terms of forgiveness, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a full five out of five, very forgiving. Now the one place this club comes up a little bit short is in the workability category. And that's very normal for a club that's so forgiving like this one. So in terms of workability, I'm giving it two stars here. Very, very straight driver, but that's not a bad thing, obviously. When it comes to aesthetics, looks, feel, and sound, I'm gonna give this a very strong four out of five. It looks great at address. That part is very strong, but when it comes to the sound is just a little high pitched for me and the feel is just a little stiff for me. And so that's why it loses just one star there. Now, when it comes to value, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a three and a half out of five. Mizuno clubs historically on the lower end of the big manufacturers in terms of drivers, but they're starting to creep up there in price. And the resale value of Mizuno club is just not gonna be as strong as some of the others like Titleist and Ping out there. Still good value for the money here. Great job, Mizuno, the ST Max, a very, very strong contender. If you make your way to a fitting this spring, make sure to check out the ST Max and make sure to check out these two videos, some other drivers you'll be interested in here in 2024. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you back here next time on another edition of Let's Play Through.